And we're back with another installment of Computer Tips. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Windows 10 and 8 login screen. Now, you may have noticed a difference from Windows 7 to Windows 8 in that it moved to more tablet style. But on top of that, it only shows one user account. And, as we all know, that is very frustrating. Because what if you need to switch accounts? What if there's lots of people using that one computer? Who knows? Whatever your reason. So in this video, we're going to be changing that to show all users upon login so you can choose from a list. And note, the users that will appear are the ones that you have created. If, they're not, if it's like the guest account or the admin account and they're not activated, then they will not show up. But if you have like three regular user accounts, they will. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. So the first thing we're going to need to do is make a quick change to the registry. And we need to do this because the registry is a central location that stores all your personal computer settings. So this is everything from how your home screen looks to how your icons appear and everything in between. All these different features. So what we're going to do is hit your start icon on your keyboard or just hit the little start button in the bottom left corner. And we're going to type in reg R E G edit. Oh, if I can actually spell right here. Just like that. And it'll just be the first one there that says reg edit. And it is, um, it is a higher privileged process, so we will need to confirm that we can access it, but of course we can. And I'm already there, but you guys won't be. So let's just go back. Actually, I'm going to zoom in for this a little bit. Just so it's nice and clear. Alright, so we're going to go back to the top here. Now you'll notice that it is in high format here. So it starts with, there's five trees and each tree contains different settings. So we're going to be going to the H key underscore local machine slash software slash Microsoft slash Windows slash current version slash authentication slash login UI. Um, slash user switch. That's a lot to remember, so let's just do this. So H key local machine. And then we're going to go to Microsoft here. I'm just going to go out of there because I've already done this, but we're going to go back in. So, we're, so it's Microsoft and then Windows. And I will have the written instructions in, in the description if you prefer to go at your own pace. This is just so you have a demonstration and something to follow. So then we're going to go to Windows here. I'm just going to reopen them so you guys can all see it. And then we're going to go down to current version. And log on UI. It's going to be about halfway down. And then we're going to go to, we're going to double click or just single click user switch here. And as you'll see on the right here, we have three options. There's default, enabled, and user SID. Now, these are the ones that determine what appears on your home screen, how it looks, all that stuff. So what we're going to do is click on Enabled. We're going to double click it when it comes up. And yours is going to be a value of 0. But as you can see on mine, it's a value of 1. And that's what we want. We need to double check that it is the value of 1. And if yours isn't, we do need to make it that. Um... So, once you have that done, you can just hit OK. Um, I should mention ahead of time, you do want to create a backup. So, I've already created one, but when this is a value of zero, as you can see on the screen, you simply want to exit out of that, ensure that it's highlighted. We're going to go File, Export, and just save it on anywhere on your computer that you know where it is as registry backup. And that's just in case something goes wrong, you are able to revert to settings that work. But it shouldn't make a difference because you're just changing an entry that has to do with literally two, two pieces of text. So anyways, so we're going to make sure that's one, hit OK, and then we're done with the registry. So we can exit out of it and we're done with that part. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to open notepad and we just have to write a small program, just two lines of code that's going to tell the registry how to update it because 
that setting that we just changed in there gets reverted every time the system starts up. So this little program is gonna prevent that from happening. So what we're gonna do is again, go down to your little start icon and type in notepad. And it'll be the first one up there. We're just gonna click on it. It's just gonna bring up an empty notepad. And you can either find this text on the website or I will also link it down in the description. So what we're gonna type is slash F, just like that. And then what we're gonna do after that is we're going to save it. So we're gonna do save as, and then call it, well, we wanna make sure it's off text, but call it something you're gonna remember. Sorry, not something you're gonna remember. Um, we have to save it as user switch.batch. That's what it is, I'm thinking the next part user switch and then dot bat for batch file. That's what that extension means. And save it somewhere you're gonna remember it. I like to do it on my desktop just because that's where I like to work from. But wherever you're gonna remember it is where you should save it from. So we're just gonna hit save and it's gonna, it'll save it and now we can exit out of that. So the next thing we're gonna need to do is open the ta task scheduler. So what we're gonna do here is hold the start and R key to bring up the run dialog box. And then we're gonna type in task and then schd.msc. And that's gonna bring up the Microsoft task scheduler and we're going to create a new task. So what we're gonna do is click create task on the right there. Actually, I'm gonna zoom in for this part too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start filling in all these all these areas. So we're gonna call this display all users. And then we're not gonna worry about any of these parts here. We're gonna change this bottom part. So it's run whether user is logged on or not. So that's gonna change it regardless. So you're always gonna see those names or user accounts. And then down here, yours might say Vista like mine. So we're just gonna go ahead and change that to Windows 10 or Windows 8 if that's what you're using. Next, we're gonna go to the trigger tab here. Just along the top, you'll see all these different tabs. So we're gonna go to trigger. We're gonna hit new triggers. It's gonna take a second. And then at the top here, we're gonna see a setting that says begin the task. We're gonna change that to at logon. And then we're gonna make sure it's highlighted as any user. And we can leave the rest of these settings. Now we're gonna hit okay. And we're done with that. Then we're gonna go over to the actions tab. And under this tab, we're gonna hit new. And then now at this part, where it says program slash script, we're gonna to navigate to the program that we just created there in Notepad. So wherever yours is located, remember you should have named it user.switch, so, or sorry, user switch.bat, so it's easy to identify. And then we're just gonna click it and click open. And we're gonna hit okay, hit okay. Mine's already, that's what that error message meant, was I've already done this and I forgot to erase the task when I, when I made this video. But yours, you won't get that error, don't worry. Um, and now, when we log off, um, I've read that you can just switch users, but I like to shut down and restart because when you restart, it's a chance for the computer to update the registry and apply the settings we just created. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do a restart and we'll see you in a minute. Hey! No! So, as we can see here, I mean, I made a warning just because it's fun. Um, it doesn't actually mean anything. So once we click OK here, as we can see, now, in the bottom corner here, we have multiple user accounts. It's not just me. It's also got a test account, which I made specifically for demonstrative purposes in this video, just so we can show that there is more than one user account there. And if you, if you were to enable the guest account or the admin account, they would also appear down there. And again, this is useful if you have a lot of clients or a lot of employees using one computer and you need to switch between users fairly frequently or you or maybe one user doesn't have permission and another user does so you need to switch between between them you never know but there's a quick video on how to enable multiple usernames appearing on the logon screen if you have any questions comments concerns don't forget to leave a comment down below if you like this video be sure to drop a like and if, of course if you're new around here don't forget to hit that subscribe button until next time we'll see you guys later